All right, we're on part six, and actually part six is kind of a little bit of my favorite because while it is probably the most random shelf, it also has a lot of really great indie artists, and it's the kind of stuff that I listen to when I don't listen to K-pop. It just happens to be in Korean. So, yeah, I can't wait to show you some of this stuff. So first we have Rico's The Slow Tape, which should be called The Sex Tape because it is some baby-making music. Sexy, sexy stuff. Next, I have Bunny's Love, which is my current favorite album I've been listening to lately. Like, that's not directly K-pop. It's just Korean R&B, and I love her voice. I have two other Bunny albums here. I have 1990 by Bunny, and I have No One by her. No, not No One. New One. That's what it is. I'm sorry. For some reason, I read that U is an O. Then, I have some CDs that were given to me by Ads Power because he's the best. So he gave me Treasure Box by Tiara, and he gave me Jewelry Box by Tiara, because he's the best, and I, I really, really appreciate it a lot. Um, next, I have Jeff Renee's Modern Renaissance, which, again, it's in English, not necessarily K-pop, but he's really popular in Korea. That's kind of where most of his fan base sits, so I put him with my Korean stuff. Next, I have So and Young's Forever Young. This is a really good album. It's a mini album. It's a lot better than it looks, but it's a digi pack, so you're not going to get much if you buy it. Then I have Guyan's Hawa Hawa. Guys, I have no idea how to say the name of this at all, but Paradise Lost. There you go. Next, I have. Taewon, as I am, Taewon is actually a really popular producer, songwriter, artist. This was his first solo effort, and I don't know if it didn't go well or whatever, but I've not heard of him doing any more solo stuff, but I hope he does because I really enjoy his music. Um, then I have Crush, Crush on You, which was my favorite album of 2014, and he has released some hot fire singles 2015, so I can't wait for his next mini album. Like, I need it yesterday. Then I have Miss S, which a lot of you probably won't be familiar with, but if any of you have watched Unpretty Rap Star and you know Jace, this is actually her group. And I bought this way before she ever appeared on Unpretty Rap Star. I had no idea. And it's really weird to me because she's actually pretty good on this album. So, see, there's her right there. So, I don't know what happened to her when it became time to do Unpretty Rap Star. Maybe she had, like, some unfortunate plastic surgery or something, but... Her face has gotten really strange, and it makes it hard to kind of get into her rap because her eyes seem dead when she's rapping. Next, we have Soulmate by 2 Bic. They're one of my favorite groups, even though I haven't bought their latest stuff, and I feel really bad about that. But I didn't like the single for the last album. I think that's why I didn't get it. Then I have Zion T's Red Light. This is a great, great album. You should get it. If you don't have it, you're sleeping. It's great. I need another Zion T album. This is Jinbo's Afterwork. I don't think a lot of you would like this album because it's pretty out there, but part of the reason I have it is because I am a weirdo. I listen to weird stuff. In fact, for the last couple of weeks, the CD I've had in my car has been Hiatus Coyote. Um, but this is important to me for my K-pop collection also because Jinbo's a really important producer in the indie scene, and he also produced Chinese Close the Door. So yeah, I like him a lot. Then I have Taeyang's second solo album, Rise. This is great. Everybody should get one of these, even though packaging-wise, sucks balls. I hate the packaging on this CD, but music-wise, flawless. Next, I have um, Big Bang, and what is the name of this album? I think it's just Big Bang. No, it's For the World. I forgot. This one is For the World. It is a Japanese release, but it's all in English, and some really hysterically terrible English at that. Then you have Big Bangs With You. Again, this is a Japanese release, but it's in terrible, terrible English. And it's not Big Bang's fault. And I actually admire them greatly because, honestly, if you asked me to do the same thing, to sing an entire album in Korean with me not speaking the language, who knows what I would sound like. I mean, it would probably be nothing but a blooper reel. But at the same time, I kind of wish they had just decided to do a Japanese album instead because it's weird to me that they released this only in Japan and it's all in English. Like, that just... I don't know. I feel like that would be like me deciding to release a Spanish CD in Russia. Like, it doesn't make much sense to me. 
And then lastly, on the small side of things, I have Big Bang's Stand Up, which has Haru Haru, which is an absolute classic. So you definitely should get that. Also, it has The Last of the Paper Dolls. Let's look at some more stuff, guys. So I said before that this wouldn't be the last time I mentioned um, Ladies Code, and I have to mention them again here because this is Kiss Kiss, um, the single. This was the last thing they released as a group, and I have this with Risei's photo card in it, and it's just really sad to me. I remember the day that I ordered this. Um, I had just heard about the accident probably 15 minutes before I ordered this album. I heard about the accident, I went on to catch up CD, immediately I ordered this and I ordered Pretty Pretty and I had no idea that this was going to get sold out the way it has been, like you just can't buy this anymore. Well, I take that back, you can buy it in certain avenues but you're talking about a hundred plus to get it, like it's just, you can't hardly get it and I think I paid five dollars and some change for it but I didn't get it because I knew I could bank on it later like this is not for sale this is never for sale really um, but I got it because and I mean this completely it's gonna sound like a lie coincidentally two days before they passed away I saw the video for kiss kiss two days before they passed away and I thought that the video was cute I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. I watched that video and then immediately after I watched Pretty Pretty and I'm like, okay, this is a cool group. I will look into their stuff a little bit more, but I'm busy right now. I'm, I've got other stuff I'm doing. And when it was announced that they had passed away, I immediately bought this because I remember thinking to myself, if I don't get this now, I may never have the opportunity. And also I feel like an ass because I waited too long. And I think that's part of the reason why I've been trying to allow myself to be exposed to more rookie groups because the time is now. You know, we always tell ourselves, well, I'll get that later, I'll get that later. And then you get to a point where, you know, it's too late. I wish I had been able to support these girls financially while they were alive. But as it is, I like to think that by buying these albums after they passed, that that helped them go up the charts and to fulfill their dream of hitting number one, that it never happened during their lifetime. And also, I hope that some of the proceeds from these sales went to their families to help them with the expense of burying their loved ones. That was a really sad interlude. Let's keep going. So we have Winner's um, 2014 Spring Summer Collection. I'm assuming that's what it's called because that's what it's called in fashion terms. Then I have Mama Moo's Hello and I have Mama Moo's Pink Funky. Then I have Dix's Error which is really really great. It is an amazing song. I really really love this. It was one of my top things for 2014 and I have a copy of Voodoo on its way so I'm excited about that. Then I have TR's Breaking Heart which I got from Ads Power because again he is an absolute sweetheart. Then I have You Kiss's seventh mini album, and this is the Stop Girl mini album, I think. Am I right? Yes, Stop Girl. This is a good one. Stop Girl is one of my favorite You Kiss songs of all time, and I don't even follow You Kiss like that, but I love Stop Girl. And then I have GD and Top. Um, I don't even know what this album is called. I just always called it GD and Top. See, because it just says GD and Top. But this is the Japanese version, and it is the most I've ever paid for a K-pop album without justification. Like, I paid a lot of money for my School Love Affair Special Edition, but for good reason. It's out of print, rare, and it's humongous. This, I paid like $60 for it back when I bought it because I was new to collecting and I didn't understand things. I had no idea that this could be gotten for $15 on Amazon, and I feel like an idiot for overpaying the way I did, especially considering that this thing moves around because because it's broken right here so yeah that that was a mistake on my part but you know what those are the errors that new collectors make so I'm not ashamed I just wish I had done a little bit more research and that is the key research all right let's keep going okay so this is the most raggedy k-pop CD that I own I know the rain one was pretty bad I've shown you a couple other ones that weren't so great but this one it is literally rags like it is look at that like what Look at that, and you can't see, or maybe you can, it's like been glued several times, there's like glue paste all over it, the mask has fallen off, it's been glued back on, it's, it's in terrible condition, it is an absolutely horrific condition, but it's got one of my favorite Beast songs on it, Beautiful Night, and so I, I, I want to complain, but I can't, because I really love the music on this little mini album. Next, I have G-Dragon's One of a Kind, I have the... 
gold edition. Yes, the gold edition, which looks like a Bible. Not a lot of people have this edition, but I like this edition, personally. I think it's really good. And it's got a couple Bible verses in it, so I'm not offended. I think it's pretty awesome. Next, I have Big Bang's Alive, the original metallic cover, and I keep it in this plastic because I don't want it to ruin the rest of my K-pop collection because I've heard people say that this will rust on your shelf and it will get rust on your other albums, so I keep it wrapped in plastic. In case you were wondering, this is the group edition, so there's that. Then I have this Japanese version of Alive, the monster edition. It's in pretty crappy condition as well, but I got it for very cheap, so I'm not really too worried about it. Then I have SM Best Album number three. I love this collection. I have all the CDs in a binder, and I listen to them on and off, but it is a really great way to kind of hear the history of K-pop because the sound from the first disc all the way to the last disc it is amazing how much K-pop has changed. Not just like the style of music they were doing, but even the way that harmonies are arranged in K-pop. There was a lot of kind of sharpness, very trot-influenced K-pop sound in the beginning, and a lot of that smoothed out. So yeah, this is a really interesting little package. I paid about $30, $40 for it, which isn't that much because it's got six CDs, and it is definitely worth your time if you are an F an SM fan and you like all their groups but you don't want to buy all the CDs this is really great because the last couple of CDs are a lot of like really more modern stuff a lot of artists that are still on SM now like FX, Shiny, um, Super Junior, Girls Generation there's even a little bit of XO on here so yeah I definitely recommend getting this if you want kind of SM the box set and then I have Kim Sunkey's Another Me. I love this album. This is great. It's really fantastic. Then I have um, Infinite H's Fly Again. Yes, Fly Again. I like that one. And then I have Infinite H's Fly High. I like this one. And then I have Infinite H's Japanese album because I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this. I think a lot of people call it not because it's K-N-O-T, but no. You're not going to trick me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So that's everything that's on that shelf. Let's see what it looks like when it's all put back. Okay, so this is what it looks like back on the shelf. And as you can see, there's a little gap room here. Um, that's because I plan to buy more K-pop in the future, so I don't have it just like stuffed full, but it is pretty full for what it is. So we are down to one more shelf to do and a few extras that I don't have on the shelf for reasons. So we're going to film the last part in just a moment. I will see you in the end. Bye.